altar course, mateys, and there be plundering pirates lurking in every cove, waiting to board. Sit closer together and keep your ruddy hands inboard. That be the best way to repel boarders. And mark well me words, mateys. Dead men tell no tales. <laughs> You're listening to 91 Reasons, a journey into the twisted landscape of pop culture. Keep your hands and arms inside the podcast at all times. And now, the voice, Jeff Tucker. No, there's no collection that's wrong. Whatever you decide to collect is what you decide to collect. And whatever your passion is, and whatever you channel it into, that's okay, because it's your collection. Whatever it is. You ever see the movie Throw Mama from the Train, where Danny DeVito finally shows Billy Crystal his coin collection, and it's just pocket change, a quarter, a dime, a nickel, a bunch of this, a bunch of that. And he finally has to explain, he goes, no... This is the quarter that was the change for when my dad took me to the baseball game or when we went to the get ice cream. This was the dime that was changed. And suddenly, every coin has a meaning and a purpose. So whatever you collect, whatever your passion is, bravo to you for, for forming that collection and making it your own. So in the spirit of that, of unusual collections, I got an email from a friend of mine who collects, are you not going to believe this? He collects theme park voiceovers. So what is a theme park voiceover? How do you collect them? I don't know. We're going to go on this journey together. So please welcome to the show my good friend, Kevin Horton. There he is. Here I am. How are you, Kevin? Doing well. How are oh, you, Jeff? I'm good. So you collect theme park voiceovers. And these are like when you're on a ride at Disneyland and it says... Please keep your hands and arms inside the car at all times. Am I correct in saying that? That is correct. So, how did this happen? I was just born that way, Jeff. You were just born that way? <laughs> yes. I was the weird kid on the street that would always carry a recorder around, and I, I admit, and hopefully no one hears, but I smuggled a recorder into Disneyland. So, you have a little tape recorder... Mm -hmm. You know, like like Kevin McAllister in Home Alone Two with the Talk Boy, and you go to Disneyland and you're you're transfixed by the sound recordings because I have to admit, as a kid, I loved the sound recordings in Pirates of the Caribbean Absolutely. and of course the Granddaddy of All, which is the Haunted Mansion. Oh, right? I love the Haunted Mansion. You know, and how. The, the way that the voiceover of the ride sets the tone. The ghost host. Don't pull down on the safety bar. I will lower it for you. I always tell people, take away the sound and see if the ride is the same. Oh, it's totally not. It's oh, not. Oh, yeah, no. It's not. So, you've got your recorder, and do you remember what was the first theme park ride you recorded? The Submarine Voyage. The Submarine Voyage. Yes. The original version. The original so you recorded it as a way of what? Like preserving the feeling of the ride and the emotions that you were feeling while you were on the ride and then what, you take it home and listen to it? I was just fascinated by the voices. That's amazing. I was just, I don't know if it was just, it's the original one, so, so for those of you that don't know about, there used to be a different submarine voyage other than this Finding Nemo one. You'd have to Google it because it was around since 1959 and I felt a little bit of a kinship with it because I live in Long Beach and those submarines came from Todd Shipyards, which were in Long Beach. So every time I would go to a theme park, everybody else would focus on the rides, but I was just transfixed with audio. Like I walked down Main Street, all I can think about is the type of music that they're playing. So I, and, and, and how it sets the tone. How it sets the tone. Yeah, because um, Disneyland was built by the same people who created the Disney motion pictures. So the way they looked at it was the background music, the sound effects, were the soundtrack of your day at the park. They totally looked at it as if you were walking into a movie. So I totally get that. Because as a kid, well, as a big kid now, 
I love listening to soundtracks from films. I still love it. You know what I mean? Because you get that emotion again. You know, the Back to the Future soundtrack means so much to me. The Star Wars soundtracks mean so much and to me. And certain songs, I love the Back to the Future soundtrack. My favorite song is Power of Love. Power of Love, Huey Lewis and the News. And every time that song plays, I think about Marty McFly with his guitar. Yeah. Ready to strum that thing and then blow the house half to pieces because you, you all know that scene. There's a slight possibility of overload. A slight possibility of overload. So you're in the, the submarine ride and you're recording it and what do you get home? Do you you are you reliving the ride? Yes. Just playing it and like you're back there all of a sudden. You you relive it, and I had friends that we would relive it together, just talk about it, and we would spend summer days just going over that recording over and over, and over and over. That's amazing. I mean, because the the original submarine ride has a full story. Uh, you hear the captain, but you also hear. The crewmates, you know, Captain, Captain, we've got a uh, giant squid off the starboard bow. Giant squid dead ahead, you know, as a ding, 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 ding right? Yeah, and uh, uh, all ahead one third. He goes, uh, I we're seeing mermaids, you know, and it's best not to put it in the log. Okay, now you're making me remember. It yes. starts out with all ahead one third. Yeah. All ahead one third. Stand by to dive. 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 So now. We'll go back a little bit further. I always loved old radio programs, like what they have on KNX or, or they play those on Sunday sure, nights. Sure, sure. I would just... I would turn, radio serials. Turn the light off in my room, and I would just get enraptured by the, by, the, by the the story. Well, before television, this was how people were entertained. You used your imagination, you know, Little Orphan Annie, Superman, The Shadow, who knows what lurks... What evil lurks in the hearts of men? Suspense. Yes, the shadow knows. So that's what I would do with these recordings, is I would become just enraptured with them and then just over and over listen to the same story because I was, remember being nine years old, about 254 years ago, I think. Give or Go, take. Give or take. Going into the haunted mansion and hearing Paul Fries give that ghost host speech. The granddaddy of the all. The granddaddy of them all. When and, hinges and creak. In doorless chambers. And I was just transfixed. Yeah. And I, I said to myself, I want to do voice recording someday. And that's another thing that we've talked about before. Is I've been able to, to do that. But it started through the theme park voiceover. You, at an early age, recognized the importance of that in telling the story of the attraction. Without that, the story doesn't make sense. So you wanted to not only collect them, but then you parlayed that into becoming a person who does them. Yes. That's the ultimate hobby right there, is turning your hobby into a profession. And it's just, I'm like a big kid. So let's go through some of your highlights. You got the submarine voyage, the haunted mansion. Uh, I what have, else? I have the original, um, the original Disneyland ticket spiel. By well, Jack Wagner. What's the original Disneyland ticket spiel? He would just say, you know, welcome to the Magic Kingdom of Disneyland. And then some really affordable pricing as compared to what, <laughs> should I say that? Yeah. <laughs> really affordable. sixteen ninety five for adults ages 12 and over. And he just had this, it just flowed. And then, then I would, everybody else said, come into the park. And I'm going, I want to listen to this. You're busy recording the ticket booth. I want to spiel. listen to this thing. Why? I always, I always get the why, because I like it. Why? <laughs> I'll meet you. Because you're into the details. Details. Okay, so you have the the ticket booth spiel, which is fascinating. Because I remember there's one that plays outside where the guy says, uh, "Into everyone's life, a little rain must fall." So too with Disneyland, and then he talks about how the park's going to stay open. All those little ones. And then I remember I have the spiel of the when they actually had trams back then where we would take you through the parking lot and not to California Adventure. When you, oh, you yeah, spend the, half yeah. the time when you leave and there would be a please stand behind a white safety line. It was a white safety line back then. Now they turn into yellow. Confusing. <laughs> and I'll, I'll throw some trivia out there. Did you know that there's a connection between the gentleman that does the Haunted Mansion Holiday, 
and the tram voice. I have no idea. Corey Burton does both of those. So you're a fan of these guys. Yeah. So it translates from recording and memorizing and liking them to wanting to know who does them. There's whole conventions. The, one of the most popular panels at Disney 23 is the Voices of the Parks. And you know, you say that, and I saw, I've never been to D23, but I saw it on YouTube. Fascinating. And I tuned in just to see what it was like, and I couldn't stop watching. And you know the one that got me the most? Which one? Uh, was the one for the Indiana Jones Temple of the Frid Forbidden Eye attraction. I saw that. Because I thought it was John Reed Davies. I, I was blown away by that, too. I, I was shut Now, John Reed Davies, in the movie, plays Sala, and mm -hmm. he appears in the safety video. But it's not his voice on the soundtrack. Then you, see, then you look at the one that does it, and then you go, oh, my goodness. It's the, he, he looks nothing. Yeah, he looks like. Oh, yeah, no, nothing. But he is able to do that, you know. For those of you that drink from the well of, of, of eternal uh, uh, life, we will be there with strollers. It just <laughs> sounds... Here's that lab. <laughs> It sounds just like him. Here's the thing. I, I'm a really big Raiders of the Lost Ark fan. I love Indiana Jones. My favorite, the first movie. If someone had put like $20 and said, that's not John Reed Davis, I would have taken the bet and I would have lost. That's how good that voiceover is. I have a friend of mine who is Mark Silverman. That name doesn't sound familiar, but to friends and fans of the Tower of Terror, he is Rod Serling. And he did. He does an amazing Rod Serling. It so sounds a, just there, like him. There's an example of someone that wasn't Rod Serling, but of course Rod Serling, rest in peace, couldn't do the recording. Sure. But how sure. close was that? Oh, you couldn't tell a difference. Nailed it. Most people thought they had assembled it from episodes of the show. You know, like they highlighted, isolated different words. So. But it was, but it wasn't. So yeah, those voices. I mean, and they're so amazing too. And the one that gets me the most. It's funny that we're even talking about this because it's such an esoterical topic. But it really does make your day at the park because uh, I watched that D twenty three panel, and the one that made me smile the most is the one where the guy says, "Welcome aboard the Disneyland parking lot tram." Because you don't even think about there's a guy that gets paid to do that voice. But that welcoming aboard uh, statement means you're going to Disneyland. And it just makes you feel it good. It starts your day. It starts your day, right? The funniest things I would remember about the tram operators as, as the night got later and later, they would, re they would develop funny responses to the guy's questions. Oh, they would talk back to the it? The speed limit of Disneyland is, we don't have a speed limit. The speed limit, it, and they would start playing with it, I remember one tram operator, hope nobody from Disneyland is listening, did the whole spiel as Bullwinkle. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Back when it was a live person. Say, they have a live mic. Say, go to section number two. <laughs> and you're sleepy at night, but it gives you a, a neat memory. Yeah. Of, he did the whole spiel as Bullwinkle. I know that they used to do that as well in the old attraction, uh, Mission to Mars. Because... The live host would interact with the robot guy in the mission control, and he had a certain preset series of statements, and they would come up with funny ways to talk to him. Mr. Johnson. You, you, of course you know that. Did you, do you have that one on tape? Yes, I do. <laughs> is that where the albatross comes in and yeah. lands? And he, even, the joke is on us. I remember that. The joke is on us, and the albatross yeah, yeah, yeah. shakes his head. Yeah, yeah. My favorite, another one is America Sings. America Sings, great attraction. Long gone from the park. And then uh, Mission to Mars. No, Mission to Mars, um, Adventure Through Inner Space. Oh, I loved Adventure Through Inner Space. Who, who did that voice already, you know? Paul Freese. The same guy, right, from the Haunted Mansion? Yeah. Will I go on shrinking forever? Forever. Um, uh, Adventure Through Inner Space was the ride that was in the spot where Star Tours is now. It was sponsored, sponsored by Monsanto. Monsanto. And the, the gimmick was they were shrinking you down to go inside a snowflake. And for a science... I, I'm a nerd. I was a science nerd. I got all the references of where we were going and how it was working. The nucleus of the atom. I've pierced the wall of the atom. Uh, it was a really fun, like, 
You learn something. If you really paid attention, you learn something. You learn something. Oh my goodness, what a concept. I know, right? And then the kicker at the end was that big eyeball looking at you. I loved it. Doesn't and the, that remind you of the Twilight Zone? Yes, and the greatest thing about Adventure Through Inner Space was the mighty microscope that you went into in the ride had those small little figures that simulated the shrinking process. Loved that stuff. So I would... I would go as far as, I have a story that I think I've told on other podcasts that, that you've had. I'm the kid, I remember being in Adventureland when they used to have pay phones there. Pay, pay phones. phones? What's a pay phone? I Google it. A pay phone. <laughs> it's, you know, it almost seems like you've got to go back to the Flintstones to see what a pay phone is. Yeah. But I would, I would call Disneyland from Disneyland. Yes, I'm that odd. I would call Disneyland from Disneyland, and all I wanted to do was to leave a message for Jack Wagner. Jack Wagner is the voice of the man that does the conductor on the train. Your attention, please. Your attention, please. The, the Disneyland, Disneyland Limited. Limited. Now leaving for a complete trip. So For a complete trip around Disneyland. And I was blessed with this voice even when I was 15, so I, was, I wanted to call and leave a message. They kept transferring me to these other departments, and all of a sudden they said, uh, we're going to transfer you to Mr. Wagner. Now, I'm in Disneyland. You must have been shocked. I'm in Disneyland, in Adventureland, and all of a sudden this voice comes on the phone, and it's Jack Wagner. You really got him on the phone? Talking to me. That's amazing. And I, I'm like, um, uh, 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 inside, I'm like this, but I said, Mr. Wagner? He said, yes. <laughs> then right at that time, one of his announcements came on there, and I'm like, and I felt like that, that goofy guy going, gee, Mr. Flintstone, you know, the guy. Gee, Mr. Simpson. <laughs> gee, Mr. Wagner, gee, I want to thank you for all your stuff that you do. But I, 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 I held myself back, and I, Mr. Wagner, I want to thank you very much for your exquisite work. And he goes, you're welcome. What a kick that and then is. And he goes, who is this? And I go, thank you for calling. <laughs> you hung right up. And I'm just like, oh my God, goodness. What just happened? Yeah. How old were you? 15. What did you, you must have been over the moon. Because at 15, I met Michael J. Fox. And to me, it was a religious experience because it was Marty McFly in the flesh. So talking to your heroes can be life-changing. What it started for me was the love of interviewing. And I go, why are people me giving me these access to this? They don't know that I was just a little skinny kid, not so skinny now, but skinnier kid. And I would get access to this, and so I realized maybe I should pursue voiceover as a somewhat of a hobby or career. And and the whole time you're still collecting. These, how many do you have in your collection? I counted once. I, I would say 50 or 60 or maybe even 100 sound bites, but it, it could be around from early Disneyland to... I even go across the parks. I go Universal, um, Knott's Berry Farm. Yeah. You look and a lot of that stuff is out there. Knott's Berry Farm has an iconic ride that our, uh, many people know about, the Berry Tales. Yeah. And if you listen just to the audio portion of that, there is a plethora of fun stuff out there, little little gems. Oh, yeah, sure. And they all speak to us in a way that only theme park attractions can. Because you're transported. Transported, and it, it's like a movie, like you said. It's a, it will transport you yeah. to another world. And Knott's Berry Tales was created by Raleigh Crump. I uh, ran at Knott's Berry Farm from around the mid-70s all the way till around about 85, 86 when 86, they, yeah. they shut it down to make Kingdom of the Dinosaurs. K, uh, Berry Tales was beloved. One of a kind about a team of bears taking their boysenberry pies and jellies to the fair. And How iconic is that? It, just, it wasn't a, a theme that was done before. It was... It was Great just for the place. And yeah, they, and, and they set and it, it up was, that way. It was Raleigh Crump, the guy who basically started the Haunted Mansion and did so many things over there for the Disneyland properties. And it's all storytelling. It, all this goes back to very simple things of storytelling from your when you're little. What are you enthralled about when you're little? Stories. Stories, people, yeah. People collect stories. Yeah. 
And so, well, that that's how civilization started was gathering around the campfire and telling a story that was then passed to the next generation. And then, what made me fascinated about voiceover more often about or this is you you look at panels like you do for D twenty three, Voices of the Parks. How how impressed and interested other people are, and I realized, oh, there's more people like me out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the great thing about a convention is, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. I, I'm not so solitary. There are other people, and I'm sure there are other people who are like nodding right now, going, "I collect all those too." Because now on your phone, you can record whatever you want, take it home, digitize it. My friend Greg has spent nearly his lifetime trying to assemble every single sound from the haunted mansion because he was the first kid to ride it the day it opened. See, that's what that's what the, the little connection that you have, and another connection I had. I have a radio show that I help produce and we've talked about that on other podcasts and I just one day because I work with a convention Midsummer Scream so they were doing a panel a couple years ago about of the Haunted Mansion because it was approaching the 40th year this year would be the 45th so I randomly just on Facebook con contacted one of the family members of one of my voiceover icons and I'm thinking to myself, he doesn't know who I am. He probably hears this all the time. We connected. And it, and it led to a very in-depth interview that is now on YouTube, where he talked about his innermost feelings of being with his father when he recorded Bullwinkle. And the, that is Paul Fries. Paul Fries, the man of, himself. Yeah, and I got an in-depth interview with his, one of his sons. And he was talking about, I, I just said, tell me what it's like to be with your, he called him daddy. What's it like to be with daddy back then? And he said, oh, we would just talked about the recording sessions and it was just more than in depth. You got, you got a personal glimpse into what he was like. And it was, I was fascinated. Turned into like an hour and a half interview. Uh, that's what happens when you get wrapped up in something you're passionate about. What, um... What are some of the, your favorite recordings that we haven't talked about? My favorite is all the music from the Enchanted Tiki Room. Oh, that's fantastic, yeah. We all know the history of that. Did you know that it, what, that was supposed to be a restaurant? A sit-down restaurant, sit -down right? sit-down restaurant. Where the birds would just occasionally put on a show. And then as they were showing it to Walt, it suddenly became clear that no one would eat their dinner. They'd all be... They'd all be gawking at the birds, right? As a kid, it was my favorite attraction because it wasn't a thrill ride. It wasn't scary. There's a little bit of scare at the end with the storm, but it was mostly music and fun, and th the birds are so engaging. So you have that whole, you've recorded that whole thing. And yes. Do you ever, like, mimic them? Do you ever try to do the voices? Funny thing is, on the original attraction, one of the birds was voiced by Wally Bogue who, if, if a lot of Disney aficionados know, starred in The Golden Horseshoe. Wally was the star of Disneyland. Which was right next door. And a lot of people didn't know that right next door, he was the voice of the bird. And I think he was the voice of the... I don't know. I really don't remember which bird it was. But once you make that connection... He's the voice of Jose. That's right. Yeah. The one they go, Jose, wake up. It's showtime. Oh, uh, my CSs oh, are getting shorter and shorter. Oh, look at all the people. Yeah, yeah, that's him. And Wally Bogue. Now, Wally Bogue was the guy who taught, not taught, but inspired Steve Martin. I mean, Wally Bogue was, for a theme park guy... Legendary. Legendary, yeah. He did, how many shows in a row? Like 10,000 in a row 10,000, five shows a day for, I don't know how long that, that show ran. And that meant to the, ran to the mid-80s. There's a DVD box set you can get that has a full show on it where you can see Wally Bogue just commanding the stage as the funniest guy you've ever seen, where he gets punched in the mouth and he's spitting out the seeds that represent his teeth. and I remember that. I forgot about that. I remember yeah, that Yeah, and he has the belt, the gun belt, that he can maneuver, and like when he moves his hips, it drops to his knees. He has to pull it back up. Wally Bogue was legendary, comic genius, and he was also one of the voices of the Tiki Room. 
Where that, all the birds sing words and the flowers croon. In the tiki 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 room. And you know what else I loved about the tiki room? Was the pre-show in the uh, waiting area where all the tikis would come to life. Okay, who was your favorite tiki? Uh, oh, Pele, the goddess of fire. My favorite too. Because she was powerful, you know. I am Pele. Goddess of fire. She always sounded like she was really angry. Yes, and then she would emit fire out of her head. I have a replica of Pele in my Tremble backyard. Tremble of their foundation. Yes. I also love the tree, just because it was so odd. Also, you know why I love the tree? Because I could go in, and if there were tourists there that had never been on the attraction, I would go, I know that there's something coming out of that tree, and they don't. You know, as a kid, having... Prior knowledge gives you just a little bit of power because as a kid you don't have any, you know. And I let I love the clock one with the water. I don't know its name. I can't remember it either. But that was the Tiki Garden. Yeah, just really cool. And but think about it way back in the early '60s when that debuted. That was just that was cutting edge. Cutting edge. And there was a bird out in front called the Barker Bird. Uh, used to be on the top of Adventureland. And they had to move him because people were just gawking for. Too long and clogging up the aisle because it was so amazing to look at. And we talk about other parks too. Like I haven't really done much recording there yet, but I think about like new lands, like the the Harry Potter land. Yeah, the Wizarding that World, Wizarding of, Harry world of Harry Potter. You just think when you walk in there, it's just what take what overtakes you is just the sights, the sounds, the, the yeah, the theming, and and it, and it all goes back to just very simple recording. And if the theming is done right, you're not even aware of how much it's affecting you. The music swells and, you know, the, the, the soundtrack is what brings everything, you know, to life. It does. Like our, a favorite movie of, of yours and mine, Back to the Future. Oh, yeah, the soundtrack's a huge part of it. The way the DeLorean sounds, the, the, the way the engine revs up. And it just doesn't matter if it's 30 plus years old. If it's a good film, it's a good film. Oh, yeah, it's no. going to stand the test of good time. Good stories, like you see, yeah, they stand the test. Good stories are timeless. And I also like voices where, this is another one at Disneyland, that have educational value. And one of them is in the, the Main Street Opera House at Disneyland, and it's the great moments with Mr. Lincoln. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. I know that the actor that has recorded that is uh, Royal Dano. I've, I've, see, I have no idea the name of that actor. That's that's how into this collection you are. Yes, I am. And on their pre-show now, they show a film clip of what Walt Disney saw, which was a film about Abraham Lincoln. When Walt Disney saw that, that's who he knew who he wanted to get for. Oh, he got the actor from the film? Yes. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. That's fascinating. He played Lincoln, so they got him... And to play Lincoln. The speech is a combination of two or three speeches. Yeah. But that was, see, that's the, the, the beauty of it is you get to marry history with voice and then in a the theme park where you don't even expect to get a lot of educational value. Most people just want to throw up on a roller coaster. Yeah, no, but if you really look, there's more to it than that. And the great moments with Mr. Lincoln is. It's truly awe-inspiring. And the testament to that is they've taken him out a few times and replaced it with, you know, the anniversary movie, the 50-year anniversary movie, or there was a Lion King making of for a couple of summers. And that works and, for a while, but then they but want they want People Lincoln clamor. Back. They go to City Hall and they go, we want Lincoln back because he means something to us because we believe it. You know, we, be we believe in it. And I think that's what's beautiful about it is it's, not the Hall of Presidents, even though that, that would be great to see. I'd love to you, see you, that, yeah. But that's just, you probably get just a little bit of each one, but in this show, it's all about Lincoln. It's Lincoln's story, yeah. And the way the music swells, and he looks so real, like, it gives you a chill, like I'm in the presence. When the new animatronic now that he, they have, if you, it's just amazing, his eye movements, you think he's looking at you. Yeah, he, that's, he, that's he, wild. But it would be nothing, like you said, without the soundtrack, without take the, the sound away. It's just a, it's just, it's just, it's just motion. Another uh, comedy team that I would listen to and watch when I was younger that made me think about voice work a lot was Mo, Larry, and Curly, the Three Stooges. The Three Stooges. What'd you get out of the Three Stooges? 
how to smack somebody <laughs> 20,000 times within 20 minutes uh -huh. and make you laugh. It, it has a lot of sentimental value for me because my mom passed away about two years ago and we would we would share the Three Stooges. She would talk about her childhood of going to the theater and, and can't wait for the short subject, which was the Three Stooges. But there again, they're all audio. Try and turn down, watch a Three Stooges, but turn it down where you don't hear any audio. Oh, it's not the same without that smack. It's funny, but you've got to hear the sound effect. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. You don't realize how much of a difference that those sound effects really make. You know, as far as like Indiana Jones, I know that there's a distinctive punch sound that they use that is unlike any other film, you know. That's where just voice work fascinates me. Like I remember going on in Disneyland, the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. And I would listen to the different characters and you would hear Piglet and then Little Roo and then just little small... Little snippets. And then snippets. are you recording the whole time? I haven't done that yet, but, but trust me, give me a couple of <laughs> and I will, I will do it. So it's on the list to add to the collection. With their all new uh, security <laughs> measures that I might not be very, very I think successful. you can do it on your phone and I, they don't think they'd care. You know, you have to be careful on rides like Splash Mountain where the phone can get wet. But I think other than that, you're okay. And I, I love Splash Mountain because they, they have it, characters from America Sings. Yeah, it's all the all the animatronics that they pulled from America Sings, right? That's the beauty of it. They can reuse it, put it into a new, different thing, and it, and it becomes a totally different... And you want to talk about another attraction that really taught a lesson was America Sings by the use of music to tell the history of America. That's impressive. I remember being little, a long time ago, being little and I would be exposed to this different kind of music and that still goes today. The first place I heard it was America Sings. Yeah, and it really sets the tone for what time period they were talking about. And it's unfortunate that now it's a it's what the Star Wars hyper launch bay thing. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. They took a whole beautiful attraction out. I remember an old attraction there, America the Beautiful, Circle Vision. Oh, Circle Vision. I love Circle Vision. It's now the Buzz Lightyear ride. But I remember just my dad talking about you You watch your parents become kids when they go through it. He's got to see Circle Vision, and he just, you'd look at his, the look on his face. Yeah. And it, the, 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 not that he's old. Dad, you're not old. But the years would melt away. Yeah. Because he would just... That's a, making memories. I'll give you another one that's interesting. If you ride the train and you go through the Grand Canyon and Primeval World dioramas, uh, there's a certain music cue that they play in the Grand Canyon where it goes dun 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 dun. dun, dun. That to me, every time I see the Grand Canyon in the real world, I hear that music. See how powerful it how, is. How does that work that way? That's how long does that last? 25 seconds, maybe? Now I can't stop thinking about it. Thank you. And, and, but there's something about that music that says goats dun. and high places and the Grand Canyon. Dun, 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 dun. That's so weird to me. And then when you get to Primeval World, it goes... Bruh, you know what I mean? The and Primeval just, World. Welcome, you're back in time. There's, it's just so interesting how, how a real world um, uh, experience is colored by... A theme park memory. That's so fascinating to me. It must be why you collect them, because you now, I mean, you can call them up at any time. You can rearrange them. Plus, like you said, you've got attractions that are gone. The submarine ride original is gone. Gone. Adventure of the Inner Space is out of here. And America Sings is out of here. Country Bear Jamboree. Oh, the Country Bear. Now, which one do you have? The original or the, the summer vacation one? Original. Because... They ran the summer vacation one up until it closed. So the original one, they didn't air that for a long time. You have to go to Florida to hear that. Do you remember when you used to walk into bear country, you would hear a snoring bear? Yeah, that was one of my favorite little pluses. He had a name. I don't remember What's his, his name. What's his name? I don't remember his name. Rufus. Rufus. Rufus was snoring up in a cave. Now, Rufus, talk about, I would be so focused on audio. Rufus made an appearance in the Christmas 
Country Bear Jamboree. Oh, did he really? Do you remember? No, I have no idea. One uh, Henry goes, Rufus? Yeah. And Turn that light on. Oh, that's okay. great. Okay. You hear that. Here we go. And the, the light. Bzz. I loved um, Big, Big Al. Was that his name? Big Al? There was. Everybody knows that because you see Big Al and it's blood on the saddle. Blood, blood on, on the, the saddle. saddle. And. Yeah. And they would never air that now because it's so dark. But I loved all that. So, and as a kid, you know, kids aren't as fragile as people make them out to be. We loved all that stuff about getting scared. When we were kids, we played till the street lights came on. And then if you didn't make it back for dinner because you heard your mom way down the street, you didn't eat. Oh, yeah. You missed dinner. You missed it, right? <laughs> no cell phones. You'd wait till your mom called. And then, and was that your mom? No. Was that your mom? Yeah. And then finally... It, your mom had that look of Jeffrey. What was the name of the bear that came out of the ceiling? Teddy Barra. Teddy Barra. And she was like the Mae West of the show, of now, the Country Bear Jamboree. Now talk about the connections that I remember. The lady that played the uh, Ken Can Dancer in Golden Horseshoe yeah. was the voice of Teddy Barra. I had no idea. Look at You learn something new every day, right? But I just remember it being I can't awe. remember what her name what is. What a great show. I don't remember her name, but she's there. I mean, she At was, the very end, she goes, why don't you come up and see me sometime? Yeah, very, very Mae West, right? I'll be right up. And then the three animals that were on the wall that uh, provided the common, the running commentary, they're still in the Winnie the Pooh ride. Where are they? You're correct. Yeah, it's one of the last rooms, right? You have to crane your neck around to get to see them. When you're going into the dream sequence where Pooh is in there and he's talking about honey... You turn around and those three heads are there. Yeah, that's I love that. I love that kind of stuff. So that's, see, that's like the hidden Mickeys. Yeah, but these are hidden uh, characters from our our childhood. You know, our childhood. That's what I like about this collection is it always keeps my childhood fresh. So you just pull them out, listen to them, transport they yourself. They take you back to a different time. Yeah, yeah. I can when totally you have a sad that. time in your life now, you, you take yourself back with, like, with my mom to the Three Stooges. They have videos on YouTube now called um, Mo Slap videos. It's called Mo Rage. Is it and, just and, Mo and Slapping? They just yeah, edit it fast together. He just like slap, 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 <laughs> slap. And it is the best waste of four minutes of your life as possible. Oh, that's really funny. And the pie fights. Yeah, lots of pie fights. That's what's just amazing about any collection. You're right about any collection. Whatever you collect. It makes you feel good. If it means something to you, then it, then it's a collection. I was thinking before about this and going, I don't have a collection. Then all of a sudden I think and go, well, I collect that. Well, I collect that. Well, I collect that. Now I collect that, too. And you go, oh, my gosh, the show's only an hour. Right. How am I going to talk now about Now there's it too all? much to talk about. Right. It, it, it's funny how I always tell people because they're a little hesitant to open up about their collection a little like, well, I won't be able to fill the whole time. And I go, wait, wait and see. Because you come on the show and because we're talking about something that means something to you, your collection means something to you, you know, and it's not monetary. It's emotional. You have an emotional attachment to this collection, no matter what it is. And it's just so fun to talk to people and find out, you know, the roots of, why do they collect it, you know? You collected theme park voiceovers because you were entranced by them. Yes. And that translated into collecting them and then wanting to do them. And then wanting to meet the people who did them. You know, that's quite a jump. Yes. You know? Because when I was a kid, as much as I loved Luke Skywalker, I also loved Phil Tippett, the guy who built the models. You know what I mean? The guy who... Uh, created the magic that was on the screen. So there's a whole, there's all these layers to it, you know? And there's just something comforting about theme parks. You know, we feel safe in them. We like to go to them to escape. That's why I love them. You know? What's, yeah. what, what's, what's the current ones? What are you trying to get now other than Winnie the Pooh? Oh, anything, uh, especially with, um, and I wish I would have gotten it, but I didn't. They recently got, um, Replaced Terminator 2 3D at Universal with with Despicable Me, and I never recorded Terminator 2. Oh, you never got that one. I just there's something about that 
girl at the top that if you've ever seen Terminator, she goes, special. She goes, so super. Super. But yeah. that's, and that's live action, so you never knew. You got a different time, girl every time. So it was funny, and she goes, I remember her saying, have any of you, within the small amount of time that you've had your glasses, continued to break them? Yeah. And it, well, she, they, they did a good job of that character because they set her up to be really smarmy because they wanted the, the, the turn. Because she turns at some point and just is a nasty woman because she's the head nasty. of Cyberdyne, right? So she's super sickly sweet at she the beginning. Super. You know, or she's like, Oh, did you lose your glasses already? Super. Somebody get him a new pair. You know? Yeah. We're watching you. What Don't a, do it again. What a fun attraction. And now it's the Minions. I like the Minions, too. They speak a different language, though. Yeah. But the... SpongeBob. And talk about other ways of... Uh, SpongeBob. The craze of SpongeBob. Why is he so popular? I, I, just, I love Squigglesworth. Squigglesworth. Yeah. Is that the, Squidsworth? Forgive me, I'm old. I can't remember his name. <laughs> Humor me, um, um, millennials. You know what attraction I liked that I'd love to see again? Was the uh, Battlestar Galactica ride-through. Oh, I recorded that one. Oh, okay. did you really? Now we're talking, okay. Where the Colonial Marine would see, come out? I'm getting older. I forgot about that one. I love that one. And that's where I paid my friend go, I won't get, he goes, I won't get in trouble for doing this. I need you to record it. And then I had him record that, and I had him record Castle Dracula. Nice. You remember Castle Dracula? That's well, that's going back, right? And Conan the Barbarian. Conan, yeah, the Conan I record show. those too. That was um, uh, Gary Goddard worked on that. I was a very studious nerd back then. Bob Gurr. Oh yeah, I love the Conan show because well, I liked Conan. The fire in the middle of the it. fire, the dragon, and you know, as a, a kid on the cusp of puberty, there was a very pretty girl in that show that was easy on the we eyes. We all focused on that part. <laughs> But then to get to meet Bob Gurr later on, you know, I worked these conventions and he happened to be there. And so you're, you're talking face to face with him. And then you, you realize when you look at his history, oh my gosh, half of my childhood, he created the doom buggy. He created all the things that you... Yeah, the Autopia, the Omni Mover, uh, the Big Kong from anything that Universal moved, Studios. The one that the, had banana breath. Yes, the dragon from Conan, you name it. He had a hand in it, yeah. That's what's fascinating. And then, then Tony Baxter. Another legend. So nice and down to earth. Yeah. And it, that's what's amazing is you meet these people and you, you expect them to be either not very talkative and you find out that they're theme park nerds just like me. Of course. What, what, uh, do you know the, uh, the voiceover for, the, for uh, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad? Speaking of Tony Baxter, he's the one who designed that attraction. You know that one? Hold on to your hats and glasses. This here's the wildest ride in the wilderness. And that meant the ride was going to start. We don't. I don't think we realize the impact that these voiceovers have on us. Because like I was talking earlier, you know, because we'll book in the show with it. There was something about that guy saying, "Welcome aboard the Disneyland parking tram." Like there's something about like, oh, it's starting. It the the journey is starting. We're going to go to Disneyland. Like, how great is that? Especially, in the, in, you can't walk up to the park without hearing a... Uh, you know what I'm talking about with the all aboard? The way he says it? All aboard. No, and he goes, uh, board. There's something... This is what, board? There's something about that, right? You know, the Disneyland Railroad now arriving. And for me, when I was a kid, I would get chills when the Main Street Electrical Parade theme came on and the lights went down. Oh, yeah. Well, the, and talk about a, a soundtrack, the Baroque hoedown just means summer, means fun, right? And five years ago, a friend of mine that we know mutually, we were at a gathering, and he, he said, Kevin, I want you to sit down for a second. I want you to meet a friend of mine. And I go, okay. Or I sound like, okay. And the writer of Baroque hoedown came over. Wow, who's that? It was, um, now I... Being old, I can't remember his name. A genius. His name was yeah. Genius. That, that's right. That's I you can't talk remember. To him. Yeah, and so he sat down, and it was uh, Don Dorsey. Don Dorsey, he came to you. Yeah, after banging my head over here, and he would 
right in front of you going, I don't want to seem like a nerd because go ahead. I said, <laughs> nerd I said, out. I said, you wrote my childhood. Yeah. And I got a chance to thank him. I go, you, I know you probably heard that, heard this all the time, but thank you for doing that. And well, he goes, yeah, my Baroque Codown was a little popular, don't you think? Yeah. A little. The understatement of the century. A little popular. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Disneyland proudly presents. The Main Street Electrical Parade. Now, I mean, now the goofy thing is I know who did that voiceover. Who did that one? Jack Wagner. Oh, Jack Wagner. They, they pitched him up for if that. You, now, if you listen, it, it's, it sounds like a robot, but it was Jack Wagner. Because Jack Wagner also wrote all of the music for Main Street. Well, there you go, folks. Or wrote it or provided it. Kevin Horton knows everything about his collection of theme park voiceovers. Yes, if you ever need a next question for Trivial Pursuit that makes no sense at all, use some one of those. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on the show, Kevin. It was really great to have you on and to talk about your amazing, uh, unusual collection. It's amazing, unusual, but it means a lot to many people. Well, thanks for coming on the show, Kevin. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to 91 Reasons. Please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. Find us on Facebook. Is anyone even still listening? To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past. And here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America, with the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world.